that. Um, first of all, I've never done a press conference for your ecstasy, so forgive me if, uh, um, you know, this kind of rambles and I don't give you what all you need, but um, what I'd like to do right now is uh, just make a few brief comments about the store, how we got here, the situation we're in, um, my plan, and then I'm willing to take questions from anybody here, and then um, if uh, you need any one-on-one -on -one time to get your, you know, your sound bites for the news or whatever, um, I'm happy to give that to you. I'll answer as many questions as I can. Um, thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to have to lighten up because I, I, I'm going to start crying, and that's not going to end very quickly. I'll throw this um, back to you. No, I got, I got my own box, Ron. Thanks. I brought, I brought enough for everybody, though. I'll pull a couple out. Okay, thanks. Um, have you seen the, uh, the Bill Murray movie, Groundhog Day? Yeah. Yes. Okay, where he, you know, continues to live this day over and over and over again. Well, for the last three months, I've been having this press conference at about 3 a.m. in my head. And uh, actually, it's better attended than I than I had hoped. So thanks for being here. Um, it'll be nice to get this out of the way and to move on today and uh, and see what the future brings for uh, your ecstasy. Um, I prepared a bunch of notes, um, and uh, I'll try not to ramble too much. I'll try to be as concise as I can. Um, let me make this clear. The last thing I want to do is close this store. I want this store to live on. It's. Uh, become apparent in the last few days um, how much this store means to people. As the owner, I see this store totally different than you do and totally different than the way my customers see it. Um, I see what this store can be and what's wrong with it. And uh, just the, uh, the outpouring of support even before this conference has been um, very humbling and uh, inspiring and putting things into a little bit better perspective. I do not want to close this door. I'm going to do everything I can to keep it open. Um, I prefer not to move. Um, I've had some great offers for uh, anywhere from free rent to reduced rent to, you know, just all sorts of great offers. Um, it's been my experience. You know, I've moved this store up and down Bardstown Road many times. And uh, I actually had a second store in the suburbs in Middletown. And trust me, um, if there's anything I know, this store belongs here on Bardstown Road. I am in negotiations with the, uh, the property managers um, to see what we can do to, uh, to make it work. We may have to downsize the store just because of the economy and uh, the nature of the music business. Um, I just want all the customers and fans of this store to know that I will do whatever it takes to keep this going as long as you want it. Um, I, pol I apologize to everybody that's called and written me emails and tried to get a hold of me. Um, it's just been, uh, like I said, it's been overwhelming and I, I, I do still have work to do every day and I try to do the best I can. Um, I want to thank the uh, staff for the dedication to this store over the years. Um, the staff is, uh, they're the ones that make this store. I mean, it's the customers that support it, but it's the it's my staff. It's not me. It's uh, I may have opened this store, but I learned very early on that the store was no longer mine. It belongs to uh, not only the people that work here and and are the front line, but it belongs to the customers that uh, apparently the store means so much to. Um, like to uh, thank everybody that's ever shopped here. Um, you're the ones that have made the store possible, and you're the ones that can save it. Um, I'd like to uh, send out a special thanks to uh, a young lady I've never met. Um, her name is Becca Barhorse. She's from Louisville. She's a student at U of K. Um, two or three days ago, she started a Facebook page um, called Save Your Ecstasy, unbeknownst to me. And uh, I think the first time I looked at it, we had maybe 1,500 friends on there. Today, it's over 19,000. Yeah, um, it's because one person cares enough about this store. Um, just to put it in perspective, this store has had its own Facebook page for a number of years. We only have 4,500 friends. <laughs> uh, 
obviously we're not doing something right, you know. Um, I've always been interested in music. It became apparent to me at a very early age how important music could be and how powerful um, of an art it is. Um, I use this example all the time. I was, I was a music fan before the Beatles first appeared on the Ed Sullivan show, but watching, watching that show solidified it for me. I knew that I had to be involved with music. I already loved it, but just to see the power that, uh, that a musician, that an artist could, could create um, definitely touched my soul. And I've been Amen. passionate Amen. about music. I've been passionate about music ever since. Thank you, Ron. Um, I never really thought about being here uh, 24, going on 25 years after I started this. I've been selling records since I'd left high school. 1976, um, I moved to Louisville um, for a record store right down the street, Karma Records. Um, I'd never been to Louisville before, and uh, the first day here it felt like home. There was something about this street, this neighborhood, this city that just, it felt right. And I can't thank people enough for uh, supporting what I've tried to do here. Um, originally, I just wanted to be the kid behind the counter selling records. And here I am, 37 years later, the kid in front of you still wanted to sell records. Um, one thing I want to address is the perception of your ecstasy and the reality. And this gets to the heart of the matter. Um, so many people have told me what this store means to them and that it's, you know, it's an institution and it's iconic and it's a big part of their lives. And uh, all I wanted was a record store. Um, obviously, the music business has been in the toilet for a long time. I've always said I can survive the music business. I can survive the industry. All the changes, we can deal with the changes. The digital changes, we have a digital website. A download site that offers better quality downloads than iTunes. I can't compete with Apple. I can't compete with iTunes. I can't compete with Amazon. I have one store in Louisville, Kentucky, but I'm doing my best. The economy has killed us. I understand that people don't have money to spend on music like they used to, but uh, you know, the reality is we have a lot of people that have made gracious offers for benefits, for donations, for gifts, for, you know, bake sales, whatever, I appreciate that. The only thing that will truly save this business is your continued support in your business. If uh, off the top of my head, if every one of the 19,000 people on our Save Your Ecstasy Facebook page came in here and spent a dollar a day for a month, this store could live for a few more years. It's that simple. Um, I'm not asking for a bailout. I'm not asking for a handout. I'm asking for that proverbial hand up. Um, like I said, uh, the easy thing for me to do right now would be to turn off the lights, lock the door, and walk away. But um, the store is not mine. It's the people that uh, have supported it and built it, and I can't do that to them. So um, that's the gist of it. The store can't survive. It's just, it's not up to me anymore. Um, it's up to the people that uh, that see the value of this store and the, the value that it brings to the community. Um, we've always supported local artists. Um, I started the Year Ecstasy record label years ago, and uh, not to make money because it certainly has done nothing but lose money. But we've released um, 54 records, and they're all, they're all great records. I'm very proud of all of them, and most people have never heard of them. Um, we've always tried to support the community in any way we can with donations and sponsorships and whatever. And in the last few years, I've just had to basically say no because we don't have the money. Um, business has been bad for the last straight three years. I've propped up the store as best I can with... Uh, what little savings and retirement money I've put aside over the years. It's not been much. The staff is stuck in here with me, um, working for uh, less than what they're worth. Most of the staff um, have not had raises in three years. 